G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Uh, this is part three of my C14 project. I bought my dream telescope and I've been slowly setting it up in here in the observatory. But first, I just want to uh, check in. Uh, America, are you, uh, you okay? You okay, buddy? Just uh, checking in on your big chief. We're all a bit worried about you. I know most of your uh, American telescopes come from Chinese factories. There is talk about 60% tariffs, uh, not just on Chinese, but also Mexican imports too. Now that would mean if you were going to buy a big telescope, maybe a telescope like this one, uh, a telescope like this with a camera like a QHY, which is also made in China, it's probably gonna run you in at about $15,000 or more. And that's for a telescope that's currently well under $10,000. And I thought Australia was paying a big tax. So if you're thinking about getting into astronomy, maybe upgrading your equipment, maybe buying a bigger telescope, it's probably something you need to do before the end of the year, maybe with the show sponsor High Point Scientific. There's also another factory in Tijuana, Mexico, which was recently mothballed. It's sitting there gathering dust, all of this beautiful telescope making equipment because of the collapse of Orion and the Mead brand. And I believe the employees at the factory, the Mexican workers had to sue in order to get paid. Hopefully they did. If I had enough money, I'd buy that factory and then we could make our own telescopes. Dylan's Big R Tubes, got a nice ring to it. But right now we live in two economies. The economy that most of us live in today where everything's expensive and we all live in this space. But there's a second economy, the economy of billionaires and big companies. And those guys seem to be doing great. And thankfully, those guys are now in charge of the US government, 100%, no guardrails, no checks. So everything is gonna be fine. Now I realize that doing big astronomy or building a big telescope and a big observatory setup like this is, it's a little bit on the nose right now. Most of us can barely afford a C-Star 2 or are pivoting to smartphone astrophotography because we need to make ends meet. And this is a hobby that it's a bit of a luxury in a sense that it's something we do for our own leisure and we invest a fair bit of our own money into this when we have the money. Now I realize that the telescope economy overall, like many industries, is failing right now. There is not enough money to go around to buy a, an extra telescope and more stuff. Hopefully this situation improves in time, but in the meantime, I will still bring you along and hopefully there will be some tidbits of information that makes sense for your journey as well. As always with my astrophotography journey, it's something that goes piece by piece. I don't, I don't have the money to buy everything all at once. I build it bit by bit, and that's what's happening here. In this video, I'm gonna show you a few of the first steps I've taken with the C14 and a bit of the tests and first light. And I'll show you a little bit about the talk I gave in New Zealand recently. And I will share some few little projects that I've been working on that might help you with your astrophotography as well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Star. <laughs> I recently got my dream telescope. And of course, you know, the first thing that happened. In part two, I told you about the digital finder scope setup that I did. This is a color QHY642 camera that I put on a Skywatcher finder scope guide scope, which actually allows me to go to a planet. In fact, now I've got this plate solving nicely with Nina so I can plate solve to the planet and it ends up on the camera chip on the main camera, which is great. I also set up a little screen down here on the floor so that when I'm out at night, I can collimate, I can focus, I can do things without having to hold my phone or whatever out here. And that's actually turned out to be really good. There were collimation issues after the shipping from California, very slight, but enough for me to tune it in a little bit better. Uh, as the weather clears, I'm gonna do more precise collimation and hopefully get this bang on. Now the seeing has not been kind to me. Even on the nights that were clear enough to use the telescope, I wasn't getting the best results. And I know that I'm not gonna get the best results with the color camera in the first place, but that didn't stop me from doing just a little bit of science. This picture wasn't actually too bad. I was able to resolve most of the detail on the surface, get Cassini's division. This will be the worst photo of Saturn I take on this telescope because I will be switching to mono I will be getting better filters, I will be getting a better focuser. So that led me to the idea of 
even though I'm not getting great results just yet, I can still do a little bit of science with this. And what I wanted to contribute to was Marc Delcroix's Detect project. Now, this is where you do planetary surveillance and you record videos, as many videos as you can, in order to detect impact flashes on the surface of the planet. We have a number of documented impact flashes on Jupiter already, but so far, nobody has been able to capture an impact flash on Saturn. And we know that they happen. We're just waiting for that first amateur astronomer to get the actual point of impact. So what this means is that I've been filming Saturn in large chunks, just going for hours and recording all that video and processing it with the Detect software, which is amazing software and reporting all of that information, even the null results back to Mark. And Mark updates the leaderboards here and, and there'll be a, a number of names that you recognize in this list if you are part of the amateur astronomy community. And I am slowly inching up the list for Saturn. But this also meant that I had to upgrade my storage. So I just got myself a small, cheap two terabyte hard drive to record. It doesn't need to be SSD or anything like that. It is fast enough and records at 80 frames a second. One other thing that I've been thinking about with this planetary stuff for a while is Sharp Cap versus Fire Capture. I love both of these programs and I feel that for some reason my images just feel a little better when I'm using Sharp Cap. But the one thing preventing me from moving permanently to Sharp Cap, other than the small license fee, is that Fire Capture has Auto Guide. And when Auto Guide is working, it means I can set up the telescope to lock onto Saturn and it will stay locked onto Saturn all night. It will slew them out left, right, up and down just to keep that. It's essentially guiding on Saturn. So when I am doing this planetary surveillance, I don't have to sit here. I can just press record or set up an auto run loop and it will just keep recording those videos for hours. Now, a few of you have asked me about where my astronomy setup calculator has gone. I've made new versions for you guys. You can find these versions on byronbayobservatory.com.au. I'll put the links in the description, but there are a few really good tools here. One of them is the astronomy weather tool. Now this only works for Australians, so put your postcode in and you'll get that nice grid format that astronomers love. And basically it shows you what you wanna know, which is, is it cloudy and is it raining? And as long as it's not, the astronomy weather's good. Go out and capture the heavens. But the main thing that you guys wanted was the astronomy calculator. So I've hooked this all up with way more equipment. If you've never used my astronomy setup calculator before, it allows you to try different combinations of things, even eyepieces if you're in, into visual for some weird reason. But essentially you can choose a telescope, choose a camera, and it will tell you how good the sampling matches. You can then change things around with Barlow's, magnifiers, reducers, uh, you can change the binning and it allows you a bit of a preview. It uh, gives you a simulation of what the view will look like on the camera chip and it will tell you whether the sampling is good or not. Now for planetary, you do want to be a little bit oversampled. So it does allow for the 5X rule and 7X rule and it will show you ticks where you are doing well. If your equipment isn't in the list, you can put in the details manually, the F number and the focal length or the pixel size, that sort of thing. And you can test any equipment with this calculator. However, if you do want me to add your gear, just fill in the form to suggest a telescope or camera and I will add it into the calculator for you. Now, all of this stuff is also connected to High Point Scientific, who is the sponsor of this video and also the sponsor of the calculator now. So if you find any equipment that kind of works for you. You can just click the link and see if High Point Scientific stock it. They pretty well stock everything. High Point are an amazing American vendor who now ship globally and have a massive warehouse of all the different brands. They fully support their equipment and they have a price match guarantee. So thank you for supporting the channel High Point Scientific and I hope the calculator is of use to everyone who is figuring out about different combinations of gear and want to know if things work together. This will really help you. Thanks to everybody who asked me where the calculator was. Uh, that gave me the kick up the bum to actually make the calculator somewhere that wasn't gonna change. So now that it's on my website, uh, anyone can use it. And that link will work for as long as I live. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you to the Auckland Astronomical Society who invited me over to New Zealand. I hopped on a plane, went over there and helped judge their Astro Awards along with Fraser Kane and Judy Schmidt, legends in their own right. And we discussed all the winners. It was all anonymous, so we didn't know who was who. And as usual, the best work floated to the top. And between the three of us and a little bit of scoring, 
Uh, they worked out mathematically who was at the top of the pack and there were some amazing winners. I gave a talk at the dinner there about my astrophotography journey, a little bit about my history, a bit about some of the projects I'm working on, but also about amateur data-led projects. This is science that you can do from home. Stuff like the DETECT project I just showed you where we're doing planetary surveillance. But there's also all sorts of other projects. There's things like variable star detection, there's galaxy and supernova surveys, there's near-Earth object detection, comet discovery, the list goes on and on. But the cool thing about doing science with the equipment that you have already is that science isn't really obsessed about image quality or aesthetics. In the sense that it wants good data, it would prefer that your data was reduced and analyzed correctly and objectively, but it doesn't need to win awards. It doesn't need to get a thousand likes on Instagram. What they're concerned with is whether the data is there or not. Case in point with the Saturn surveillance stuff, my images recently in the surveying I've been doing are really uh, substandard in terms of planetary image photography. The seeing has been terrible. I'm poking through the clouds but I am getting the data they need to see if they can detect an impact. And that's all that matters. I do encourage you to check out the Detect project if you have time. Anyway, in the next episode, hopefully I'll have more of an upgrade on the focuser situation and I'll be able to level up my planetary photography, hopefully before Saturn disappears. Uh, Jupiter is coming around soon, but it is very north facing this year so it doesn't come up as high as it normally does for me which is a bit disappointing especially since i've just invested so much in a kick-ass planetary rig but you americans need something to look forward to so look forward to jupiter this year my name is dylan o'donnell and you've been watching star stuff and remember everything is meaningless and we're all going to die